Hey, it's Aaron the Metal Theologian. So this is probably going to be kind of a short one because I'm going to open a pack and uh, maybe show a couple extra records too, depending on what's in it. But, uh, you know, I got a haircut the other day. One thing I've noticed, the fucking older I get, the more I get like this fucking LBJ thing like in the front here. So, I don't know, man. Fucking age. But you know what's cool about being older? I have a way better record collection than when I was in my 20s. <laughs> yeah, so see, there you go. That's the mitigation. Maybe it's a dick thing to say, but you know, if you're 20 years old and you've got a full head of hair, Fuck you, you've got your whole life in front of you, man. So anyway, um, this is, uh, actually I got a pack from, uh, so it's pretty much the most amazing handwriting I've ever seen. Let's see if I can show some of that. But yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's fucking nuts. Uh, my, uh, it has that on the back, which made me laugh, too. But, uh, I uh, talked with my boy with Spencer. Uh, he told me I got a record in the mail. I was like, yeah, the handwriting is unbelievable. It was like from American Horror Story or something like that. I got home, I was sort of envisioning, you know, be a sort of, you know, big and kind of extravagant. But I said, I was like, oh my God, you aren't kidding. So this is from the one and only Rob Paniques. And uh, I am not only very happy to be opening this up because it's awesome to get records in the mail. And I'm pretty sure I know what's in here. And it's a record I'm very happy to have again. But also because uh, Mr. Rob Panique's kind of a legend. I mean, he's been, you know, when I started doing this, he was one of the guys who just seemed like such an institution, that, such sort of a vinyl community fixture that it just seemed kind of unapproachable in a way. So, you know, at the risk of sounding overly corny, it uh, feels like a really great honor to be holding this thing in my hands. So, um, let's see what it is. Shit, hang on, I missed the spot. Of course, there's no pre-opening. You know what else I didn't pre-open? Fuck. I was trying to trying to figure something out, man. This is open now, but I kind of got this fucking thing in my throat. And I actually picked this one special, seriously. The thing in my throat's a joke. I just say that sometimes. In case you're wondering, I'm rarely actually punched when I do a video. That's just theater, you know. So anyway, though, this is uh, Squam Scott's Old Fashioned Beverages. You can't see that for shit, can you? And this is a maple cream soda. I've actually never heard of a maple cream soda. But if you can see at the top, it says Made in New Hampshire. Which is not Massachusetts, but it's not very, very far, especially uh, in the land of small states. So, uh, let's see. It actually has maple syrup in it. Holy shit. Lightly carbonated water, cane sugar, citric acid, flavor, natural and artificial flavors, maple syrup, and then a couple preservatives. And... Uh, it's funny that they need cane sugar and uh, maple syrup. But, uh, yeah, Newfields, New Hampshire. So we're going to bust this open. We're going to see if it's any good. Check out that cap, by the way. There's really that carbonation. It's pretty nice. It's like just the right amount. So I usually notice that. But uh, especially since this thing is so light, it's kind of distinctive. This is really something. It smells very maple. Like as I was bringing it to my face, I could totally tell that. I'm not quite sure if I like it or not, honestly. There's not very much really a cream soda going on. The maple really kind of overwhelms it. And uh, you know, when I was making my joke about sugar and maple syrup, it's right because if you put more than like a tiny dose of maple syrup and anything it tends to overpower it and even though this thing probably barely has any it's like maple soda with like a hint of cream soda or something like that especially after a couple sips the first sip like I really taste the maple and the finish and now after like three sort of good swallows of it, it's really, my mouth is just full of mapley goodness, which is, uh, you know, not bad at all. But uh, I don't know, it's weird for a soda. Like seriously, I have done with the thing, I'm still not sure if I like it or not. I will say that sometimes the best stuff is uh, kind of like that, where, you know, you have to have it a few times. You know, it's kind of like that for me. If you're from the north, you've probably never heard of uh, Alabama white sauce. I never had. It's actually kind of a... Uh, 
barbecue sauce that is uh, from the north of Alabama specifically, like a few counties in the north of Alabama, like I think around Huntsville, but it might be further west than that. But um, it's like a mayonnaise-based sauce, and it's like a white sauce that is kind of spicy, has a little bit of vinegar edge to it. And it's really good, but I swear to God, I had it like 10 times before I could decide if I liked it or not. It's, um, it's just such an unusual thing, you know, compared to like the Texas on the one hand, or the Kansas City on the other hand, that are more tomato-based, it's not the sort of thing you'd expect at all, so, um, I don't remember why I brought that up. There's a reason for Oh yeah, because it was something that I ate like a bunch of times and wasn't sure if I actually like enjoyed it or not, you know what I mean? I mean, I was definitely getting something out of it from the experience of eating it, but... So anyway, this is pretty much what I thought it would be, but I'm very excited about this. And, um, let me see, just skimming this real quick. <laughs> Alright, I will not be doing a farewell VC video. I'm not going to read this whole thing because, you know, it kind of depends on how long they are and how, uh, sort of personal. But, uh, I will say that I'm not going to do that. So this is a copy that apparently Rob got an extra copy of, of Metal. And, um, yeah, you know some I used to have a copy of this, I used to have, I probably have owned almost every Pink Floyd album from the 70s. Actually, I don't think I've ever owned a copy of Animals. But, you know, most of, like, uh, you know, the Through About the Wall or something, I probably have, but this is one of the ones that I really liked. And I let go of it when I fell on hard times. You know, the flip thing to say is, I don't know why I would have let go of that, but the answer is... I do know why I let go of it, because I figured I'd see it again when I wanted it. And then what happens when vinyl comes back in a big way? You know, in the 90s, this was an easy record to find. You go to any shop and drop, you know, if there's a good copy, you might spend six or eight bucks on it, but if you didn't give a shit about a good copy, you'd probably get it for four, you know? Uh, you know, now, those days are kind of over, at least for now, and so I love this game full. That's why I'm opening this up. I always thought that was awesome. It's just so stark, you know what I mean? It looks like a band called Blood Rock or something like that. Not like Pink Floyd. But, um, yeah, I remember uh, when I was in high school, actually, still, I heard Echoes for the first time. I was like, wow, I can't really believe they ever did that, you know? It just seems so unbelievable. And uh, it was just such a cool record across the board. Um, fuck, one of these days. God, I'm looking forward to listening to this record, man. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, I kind of have a weird history with Pink Floyd. Um, it feels really pretentious to say it, but um, I really like Pink Floyd except for their popular records. Uh, I really don't like Dark Side of the Moon. I really don't like Wish You Were Here. I really, really don't like The Wall. Although when I was in high school, I thought The Wall was just pure genius, right? Like so many of us. Uh, I've never liked Animals. That's of like the big albums. That's the one that was always the worst to me. Like Dark Side, I could kind of hang with. I really liked the Wild Wall for a while. Wish You Were Here, I thought was kind of boring, but it didn't like bother me. Animals, I always just thought sucks, man. I was like that's just a piece of shit. But Metal, I like a lot. I like Adam Hart Mother a lot, and I like the other ones that I have. And since I had an inkling, I went ahead and busted out all of my puny Pink Floyd collection. Just go ahead and show these off. So I have this one. And this is actually, uh, it's a reissue from just a few years ago, but it's the mono mix, which is kind of cool. So, that's why I grabbed this one, in fact. Um, I had a tower press of this at one point. I had a few fewer songs, but, um, eh, whatever. It had C. Emily Play on it, which was kind of, you know, hip. Uh, this one, it's another reissue. Probably got this in about the same time as that other one, but, uh, Songs are Full of Secrets. Great record. You know, set controls for the heart of the song. Let there be more light. That's the kind of shit that I like, man. The fucking really sort of far out stuff. Let's dig the hell of that. I should probably swap this out. Or... Oh, look at that. That's a hypnosis cover. I didn't even realize that. How about that shit? Learn something new every day, right? I try to learn something new every day. I don't know if I succeed, but... Uh, this one I have. Soundtrack for more. And for a long time, these were kind of the only three that I cared about, and if you ask me why, I really couldn't give you a good answer. It was kind of arbitrary and uh, really kind of stupid, and again, it's probably part of why I don't have, like, Adam Hart Mother. I'm a Gumma is another one that I really like that I don't have. Uh, I did grab this one, though. This one has, like, the early singles on it. It's another reissue. It's not, like, big dollar. I think it was on clear vinyl. 
but the best of the Pink Floyd. So sort of harkening back. I don't know when this originally came out, but that's obviously kind of harkening back to, you know, single days, even before the first album. Um, and then I also have this one, which has a lot of the same songs, but I just found this at a shop. And uh, this is Relics, with the cover drawn by Nick Mason. I think it's about drawn by Nick Mason. Yeah, artwork, Nick Mason. There you go. And of course, this one has something like three different color covers. In fact, I think I've owned three different covers of this one. I only had the one with the coins at one point. And I think I had the one with the mask at one point, too, so... Who the hell knows? There's a lot of overlap between these two, but there are a few different songs. This one does not have candy in a current bun, which this one does. This one has apples and oranges, so... You know, some of those cheesy singles, it's funny, you know, when I sort of... I don't know, sort of the phases, when I sort of learned about Sid Barrett, I was like, oh, Sid Barrett is so cool, because he's a fucking nutcase, like Rocky Erickson. I mean, of course I love anyone who actually, like, legitimately went out of his tree, you know? In fact, if there's one kind of beef I ever had, it was Captain Beefheart. You get it? Like a beef with Captain Beefheart? But it always kind of seemed like he was acting, you know what I mean? It was sort of like his persona, like, you know, an Alice Cooper thing or something like that, except Alice Cooper never made any bones about what he was up to. You know, with Captain Beefheart, it was kind of more like... It was his persona, but it was it was fake, but he sort of, like, pretended, you know what I'm saying? Whereas someone like Sid Barrett, you know, who is, like, genuinely you know, disturbed or something like that. I mean, I've just always had a soft spot for that. In fact, the fucking record I'm playing right now is a Lee Perry record from when he was sort of cracking up at the end of the 70s. This just came in the mail today. And since I got some reggae stuff in the mail, I was going to show it, and the only reason I'm not is because the covers aren't very interesting. I was going to show this stuff, especially for, like, Rob Paniques, because Rob just sent me some great shit in the mail. And Rob's kind of the one, actually, who uh, got me talking about reggae a little bit more in some of my videos, because... Uh, I didn't do very much of that, but uh, since he was interested, I figured, okay, I could start. But there aren't any good covers in this pack. I didn't want to clutter it up with a bunch of covers. So we're going to stick with Pink Floyd today, and um, that's about it. God, this is a really unusually scattered video, isn't it? It's got to be this fucking maple. It's just confusing me, man. So anyway, though, I turned on to the Sid Barrett stuff, and for a while, that just seemed like the real, like, no shit Pink Floyd to me, and... And then I can't, we actually came around and realized I like some of the more serious records actually better than kind of the jokey shit that uh, um, Sid Barrett was doing, you know, with like, you know, that bike song and, you know, apples and oranges and stuff like that. But I do like that kind of stuff. And as far as like sort of, you know, sort of, uh, kind of sort of semi beatles -y really, you know, sort of 60s pop songs go, that stuff is nice. But the fact is I really kind of like what they were up to at the very beginning of the 70s more. And in fact, the, I think what I really like about Pink Floyd is that they were doing a lot of what I really liked about what happened in the 70s as early as the late 60s, really, uh, with, I mean, really starting with uh, Saucer Full of Secrets. So, um, yeah, there will probably be more getting shown here someday. If you have a double of uh, Adam Hart Mother or uh, Oma Goma or another one, uh, what was the other fucking one that I said? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a fucking space head. I suppose I could just cheat and look at the back of this one. I'm probably thinking of metal, because I've been missing metal for so long that I'm just used to, okay, oh yeah, I need a copy of metal. That's sort of one of these things that's been sort of eating at me, you know, like, this, like, fucking, like, you know, like, you know the movie Basket Case? Like, he has that fucking evil twin and shit. It's sort of like that, like, just fucking eating at my back and shit, like, metal. So, you know, I finally have it, like, I have to, like, readjust my whole, like, sort of mental state and shit. So anyway, thank you very much, Rob. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm really humbled by how much stuff I've gotten in the mail from people lately. I need to start sending some shit out, and I want to find some good stuff. In fact, kind of the, kind of the impetus for the mustache thing was like, if you grow a mustache, you're going to get some cool shit. I mean, we'll see. You know, I don't want to make any promises that I can't quite keep, because if 100 people grow mustaches, then, you know, whatever. But basically, what's pretty much going to happen with this contest if you grow a mustache, you're going to get some cool shit. And if you don't grow a mustache, you might still anyway. So, um, anyway, fuck it. I'm just digressing again now. Uh, Rob, I hope you grow a mustache, though, because I hope you rock one like a motherfucker. So, anyway, thank you very much, and uh, that's it for now. And uh, you've seen my humble Pink Floyd collection. It's pretty lame, isn't it? But uh, what can I say, man? It uh, keeps me warm at night. So, <laughs> I'll talk to you soon.